Batesian mimicry, the great pretenders. If mimicry were a crime, Batesian mimics would be the scam artists. They're harmless, but they pretend to be deadly so predators leave them alone. This trick is named after Henry Walter Bates a Victorian-era naturalist who spent years in the Amazon chasing butterflies and wondering why so many of them looked suspiciously alike. The classic case? The Viceroy Butterfly versus the Monarch Butterfly. Monarchs are basically poison candy bars for birds. They eat milkweed as caterpillars, which fills them with bitter-tasting toxins. Any bird dumb enough to swallow one learns the hard way, usually by projectile vomiting, the Viceroy, totally harmless, copies the monarch's outfit. Birds don't have time to run chemical analysis. They just remember the trauma and avoid anything with the monarch's colors. For decades, everyone thought the Viceroy was a flawless faker. But modern science threw a curveball. Turns out Viceroys are also a little bitter tasting, meaning this example might be part Batesian, part Malarian mimicry. More on that in a bit. Evolution loves to keep us guessing, but butterflies are just the start. The scarlet king snake copies the deadly coral snake. Coral snakes have the infamous red-yellow-black banding, warning predators that their venom will ruin your week. King snakes, totally harmless, wear the same stripes. Humans even had to invent a rhyme. Red touch yellow, kill a fellow. Red touch black, friend of Jack. But predators don't rhyme, they just avoid both. Then you've got the hoverfly. This insect is harmless, has no stinger, and spends its life drinking nectar. But it looks uncannily like a wasp. Birds don't check ID, they just see yellow and black stripes and bail. Batesian mimicry is basically the fake Gucci handbag of nature. It's not the real deal, but it's good enough that predators don't want to risk it. All right. I will be posting more videos here, so slam that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. This helps us to rank better in the YouTube algorithm. Malarian Mimicry, the dangerous gang signs. Now, let's flip the script. Batesian mimics are liars, but Millerian mimics are the real deal. Multiple toxic or dangerous species end up copying each other's warning signals, forming a kind of survival alliance. Take the heliconius butterflies in the Amazon. Dozens of species, all genuinely toxic, all wearing the same bold color patterns. To a predator, they're indistinguishable. Eat one, regret everything, and never touch any of them again. It's like rival street gangs suddenly agreeing to wear the same colors just to send a clearer message. And it doesn't stop with butterflies. Poison dart frogs in Peru have taken malarian mimicry to the next level. Entire populations in different regions have evolved to share identical skin patterns. Every time a predator mouths one, it learns that the entire neon squad is off the menu. It even happens in the ocean. Brightly colored nudibranchs, those flamboyant sea slugs that look like Lisa Frank designs, share color schemes across species. They're all toxic. So the more unified the warning, the safer they all are. The genius of malarian mimicry is efficiency. Predators don't have to learn 10 different danger signals. They just need to recognize one. The species involved are like, let's copy each other, and everyone wins. It's the animal kingdom's only cooperative branding exercise. Aggressive mimicry, the predators in disguise. If Batesian mimicry is bluffing and malarian mimicry is teamwork, Aggressive mimicry is straight-up villainy. This is when predators mimic something harmless or even desirable to lure prey in. The deep-sea anglerfish is the A-lister here. Female anglerfish dangle a glowing lure that looks like a worm or shrimp. Small fish swim up, thinking, free snack. And then, bam, jaws full of needle teeth. Nature invented clickbait millions of years before YouTube. Then there are the femme fatale fireflies. Most fireflies have specific flashing codes for mating, but some species of female firefly mimic the flash patterns of other species. Males see the signal, think they found a mate, and land, only to get eaten. It's basically tinder, but with a 100% chance of death. The assassin bug plays the creepiest game of all. Some species cover themselves in the corpses of the ants they've killed. Why? 
because ants are hyperparanoid using smell to detect intruders. But if you smell like an ant graveyard, you can waltz right in. It's a bug zombie movie, but the zombies are just your camouflage. And plants even dabble in this. Orchids like the bee orchid look and smell exactly like female bees. Male bees try to mate with the flower, get tricked, and leave covered in pollen. Congratulations! You just got catfished by a plant. Aggressive mimicry is the most brutal flavor of mimicry. Predators pretending to be the thing you want most. A mate, a meal, safety, and then punishing you for falling for it. Automimicry, faking yourself. Now, here's a weird one. Automimicry, or when an animal mimics part of its own body. Take butterflies with eye spots on their wings. These fake eyes make them look like much bigger creatures. Birds often strike at the spots instead of the body, letting the butterfly escape. Imagine being mugged, but tricking the robber into stabbing your backpack instead of you. Some snakes use automimicry in sneakier ways. The death adder wiggles its tail like a worm, luring curious frogs or lizards close enough to strike. The caterpillars of hawk moths inflate part of their bodies into fake snake heads, complete with eyes. Suddenly, a squishy snack looks like a venomous predator. Even big cats join in. Tigers, leopards, and jaguars have white spots on the backs of their ears, which look like eyes. Predators or rivals sneaking up from behind think they've already been spotted. Fake eyes to say, I see you, don't even try it. Automimicry proves you don't always need to copy another species. Sometimes, you just trick predators with a fake version of yourself. Fungal and microbial mimicry, the invisible puppeteers. Even fungi and microbes play the mimic game, and they might be the scariest. The infamous cordyceps fungus infects ants, then manipulates their behavior. The ant climbs a plant, bites down, dies, and the fungus erupts from its body to rain spores on more ants. It's zombie cosplay so convincing, Hollywood could never improve it. The malaria parasite uses mimicry to hide inside human cells, disguising itself so our immune systems don't recognize the threat. It's biological identity theft. Some plant fungi mimic hormones to trick plants into growing in ways that benefit the fungus, like forcing stems to elongate to spread spores. Imagine a parasite hacking your body to build its house. It's not flashy like a butterfly wing pattern, but fungal mimicry is deadly efficient. Sound mimicry, the acoustic tricksters. Not all mimicry is visual. Some animals fake it with sound. Certain katydids mimic the mating calls of female cicadas. Male cicadas fly in, expecting love songs, and get eaten instead. Some owls mimic the calls of smaller birds, luring them closer to ambush. Meanwhile, some harmless birds mimic owls to scare away predators. It's like a prank war with bird calls. Even bats and moths are locked in an acoustic arms race. Some bats mimic the mating clicks of moths to lure them in. Some moths jam bat sonar with clicks of their own. It's echolocation counterespionage. If you've watched to this point, slam that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. This helps us to rank better in the YouTube algorithm.